by the way. Oh, by the way. Yeah. yeah. We're breaking up. You're not. <laughs> yeah. you're, it's not you. It's yeah. me. You're not. You're not actually getting, no. It's you. <laughs> you're you're not getting. Uh, Oh yeah. Oh right. yeah. yeah. Phones yeah. on silent. I don't have a glass for. I don't have my, my phone. I don't have a glass for self block. Oh, I need a, so I need what a holster. What are you talking about? I need. I need my backup line. Jesus. I don't you want to wear a nice thing? Uh, so <laughs> that's your. That's your. Not your stage wine. Oh, this is my tune-up wine. Oh, okay. There you go. By the way, we're live. I just want you to know Good. that. Well, Once welcome. that goes down, we're live. Welcome. We're live. Notifications so, off. Phones, notifications. You're not disturbed. I don't need that pen. All right. Here we are. We made it to episode six of Grapes and Woo! Debates. All right. Yeah. Grapes and Debates. Presented by So Napa Grill. And uh, I'm here with Joe Bates. What's up, everybody? Yep. Six is partner, Chris Botting. Hello, and everybody. The director of special events and marketing, Emily Dunbar. All right. Woo -hoo! Welcome, Emily. Yeah. So I'm very excited <clears throat> to really get into this grapes and debates. And as we always say, we start with wine. That's the grapes part of it. And then we'll get into the debate. The grapes today are Ghost Block, Sav Blanc. Love it. Mm. Yeah. And so we had the opportunity to visit Ghost Block and had probably one of the most incredible tastings, yeah. um, hands down. Uh, Luis was our, I guess our, what are the fucking, our educator. Okay. And he was a tour guide. You, tour guide, but probably one of the best in the Valley. I'm in Napa Valley in Sonoma. This wow. guy was amazing from um, his upbringing, his roots, of being in the vineyards and then he was in construction of building caves wow i think he was even on the crew to build caves for palmas but this guy had such knowledge he was so incredible is there a tasting room on the property in there, at the vineyard the tasting room's on the property Thank at you. the vineyard a very small tasting room okay and um anyway so i kind of got sidetracked with that but so we're at the tasting and while we're at the tasting Andrew Hoxie comes out to the table, introduces himself. He's the proprietor, fourth generation farming the land. Now the and, patriarch. Well, the patriarch right. of the family, absolutely. And then <clears throat> invites us to their 120th anniversary of being in Napa wow. and farming the land in Napa. And it was just an incredible experience. Then we went to the 120th. There's less than 100 people there. And we got to meet their family, some of their friends, and tried all of their wines. So you crashed the party. In a sense, we did. <laughs> In the Sonapa van. Yeah, you did. In Lovely. the Sonapa van. I love that. Um, I love that for us. Yes. Yeah. No, it was, it was just an – it was – one of those experiences where you you cannot explain how just unbelievable it was yeah. and so since then when people say what's your favorite wine or what was your what's the best tasting you've ever had mm -hmm. i gotta tell you ghost block ranks at the very top for me only because the way this family um their approach to each generation and how they are stewards of the land mm -hmm. they are and their philosophy is we don't own the land, we are stewards of the land. Oh, wow. And we want to pass it down from the generation that gave it to us, and we want it to be better for the you next stole, generation. I'll, I'll mark that off my <laughs> okay. You stole my thumb. But, but I'm just that telling way. you, it, it, and, and when he was on stage talking about it in front of all his family and the people that were there, I mean, I was filming it on the phone, but thinking this is a good social media. I turned my phone off. I said, I will never, yeah. ever use that footage. It was because it was that, that intimate, that, that kind of that powerful to me. That it was just amazing. And after that, I said, we are going to support their brands. So they have three different brands. They do. Let me think about this. Three different brands. So the Ghost Block is what they're known for. Their cabs, absolutely amazing. Uh, then they also, cabs and the Sav Blanc. Blanc, right? And then they have Elizabeth Rose. And they also have Oakville Winery. Mm -hmm. Elizabeth Rose, we, we have the Choco Block, which is on our menu, which we'll be tasting next. Uh, it's just a fantastic blend. And I'm going to let Joe talk a little bit more about that. But right now, we're drinking Sav Blanc. 
So mm-hmm. let's have a cheers. And so Joe, let's get, let's get into this. Let's, yeah, let's, this uh, let's talk. So look, I just want to jump in here and say that this family has been, fa- has been farming and making wine in Napa Valley for over 100 years. Um, as a fifth generation cheers. grape growers, cheers, everybody. Cheers. As fifth generation grape growers whose hearts have always been in the vineyards. Um, that's why all 630 of their acres um, is 100% certified organically farmed. Wow. wow. So that, that says a lot about their integrity to the land, as you spoke of right. earlier, and to the wine. So um, the wine that we're sampling today, the Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, the Now, by the way, you're the... F- you're the fucking Sav Blanc guy. You got me into I, Sav Blanc. Started, I have been known. I started, have been known. When did I you get say that it, label? No, it, uh, listen, it, it, it started. Uh, no, it yeah. started with Mason. Sav it was Blanc. yes, yeah. And then oh, we went from Mason. We did. You know that. No, it's still a good. It's Mason still good had Sav a good Blanc. run. You yeah. know, I mean, great pre, uh, price point, great yeah. drinkability. Um, some beautiful aromatics on that wine. And then we went to. Ron Bauer. Bauer. Yes, now we've gone to Ron Bauer. We still, uh, we, we are big we dabble. fans. Of, we, still we, are, fond. we dabble still, in it. We are still, still fond, fond of sure. Ron Bauer. But, but the Sauvignon Blanc that we are uh, drinking today, Ghost Block, these, um, the vineyards that these grapes are grown in are the Morgan Lee and the Ghost Block vineyards in Yontville. And these are all so, state owned. All right? estate owned, yeah. yes. By and, the way, uh, Morgan Lee is named after the Andrew's in- daughter. Morgan Lee, who is also their director of marketing and sales. Wonderful and beautiful human being. Yes. Just one of the best. <laughs> Just love her to know. Fun fact here, we went to different high schools together. Yeah. 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 Really. It, it's true. It's true. But this is also uh, the winemaker, Christy Coford, mm-hmm. uh, longtime talented winemaker uh, for, for this family. So, well, again. That's really, that's really fantastic. Listen, it's, um, it is. Yeah. I mean, these aromatics, I'm getting... I a mean, little grapefruit. You see yourself by the pool somewhere. Oh, no. oh yeah. yeah. Speedos Any on, Any right? Maybe not. Yeah. No. Maybe not. my speedos on. No, 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 no. The, no. On. No. the fedora okay. and yes. the sunglasses fedora for sure. Always, but, <laughs> yeah. You know. But a, a little bit of a grapefruit uh, note. No, definitely some more citrus than. Oh, listen, uh, listen. I, I'm I'm getting a little white peach, and then okay. maybe on the let's let's taste here. And I think on the back end, a little bit of subtle tropical fruit, maybe yeah. some guava or some papaya. No, yeah. Nice. That's, that's big. Yeah. That's big. Yeah. 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 So yeah. something yeah. on the menu that yeah. we pair this with. I'm going to tell you what. Ooh, bacon, Call rack, out. scallops, Listen, yeah. lemon, I'm, butter, beurre blanc. Yeah. I love that. Any, any seafood we have going, and Adam just hit it right on the head. Definitely yeah. the bacon wrap, scallops. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, a, it's a home run. Yeah. These two together. Right. They're like peanut butter and jelly. Yeah. yeah. I was thinking oh, yeah. that goat cheese would be a nice, nice fit for this. I'm thinking two thirty the in the afternoon fall. by a right. pool. Yeah. Well, no, this is something that when we were in Napa, we spent a month in Napa. That once we went to Ghost Block, we bought a bunch of it, and we got back to the house. And before, probably for the next week, before every tasting, we crack open a bottle. <laughs> yeah, and Sh- Shannon, my wife's over there, knows it. We crack open a bottle at nine thirty in the morning. Sure. Drink this, or on the way, perfect to whatever tasting we went to. 9 30, uh, 8 30, 7 30. Yeah. 12 30 Eastern time. Right? Exactly. Exactly. Listen. Exactly. Okay. Lunch time. All right. So while we're enjoying this ghost block, yeah. and uh, Joe, I'll take just a little bit more. If yeah, you please. Uh, <laughs> happy to do it. So we are here with our guest host, Emily Dunbar. Emily, why don't you tell us a little bit? You know, last week we were with Sean Connors. He's been with us for yeah. 11 years I and know. he kind of taught talked about his career path with us so why don't you do the same so so napa starts for me here and i brought this as a prop that is vintage whoa whoa and i had to dig it out of an old box of clothes to find it but dirty i put it away dirty because i guess i thought i'd never wear it again yeah you know i'm glad i'm right but did you leave a bad feeling for me did you think you weren't coming back (laughs) no oh okay all right just just making sure oh Oh, (laughs) gotcha gotcha (laughs) okay i I didn't know we're gonna be full of props okay let's see what else all right go ahead no it's important it's important i pulled this out today and i thought you know what this is pretty significant for me this was a big turning point in my life and Lo and behold, I've got my server book in here still, pictures of my kids. I just, I had a, I had a time. Never too far from your heart. Yes. I keep this close by. You got to know where you come from to know where you're going. But um, I feel like you can't know me and so Napa without knowing a little bit of the BS 
before Sonapa, you know, <laughs> and um, I grew up in a big, large family. I mean, I grew up one of seven kids yeah. and wow. food hosting a full heart, full, full home. That was just my life right. always. So transitioning from that into Sonapa, it just, it felt very natural to be someone that is kind of a, a host for you. Um, I also, my dad was an organic vegetable farmer, so I feel a very close connection with this winery in particular. And I like it. The farmers and the, you know, farming culture that we connect with at Sonapo through the wineries, through our local vendors. Um, but my dad was a genius, you know, from the age when I got my license, he was pushing me in the back door of restaurants to talk to chefs about buying his vegetables. And I created this <laughs> network of um, sales for him. It was some of the funnest years of my life. I really enjoyed that. Um, but I caught the bug. I mean, I knew that I wanted to be in the restaurant industry, just the, the energy when you walk into a busy restaurant and yeah. you see the chefs working and That's just it. the connection of seeing your food going on their plate. It's just unparalleled. It's yeah. really a, a cool experience. But I think that that kind of all molded me to be where I am today. And um, five years ago, I walked into Sonapa. I had had a baby about six months prior and I needed to start working again and uh, talked to Eddie Gallagher. And he was, you know, he was kind of like, yeah, we're not hiring right now, you know? And I was like, listen, I need a job, man. Like, don't put my right. resume on the pile. I, I, I need I'll take two days a week. And he hired me in, uh, I think it was December. So it was busy season. Yeah. And next thing I know, I'm working five nights a week. Sure. You know, got busy real quick. And um, yeah, I mean, from there, works my way into the bar program. I settled into that really easily. I feel like it was an extension of kind of my need for creativity and it's a little bit of a touch into culinary as well because you're creating, you're you know, making recipes, and I was always the one that was like, "Hey, Eddie, I want to run this cocktail special." You know, I just I loved that. So, um, worked my way in the bar program for a couple of years, and then when we started to open Ormond, I remember just having a conversation with Adam saying, "Listen, I don't know that I have this in me much longer. You know, I I need something new." Right. And I, that's kind of New my challenge. My course in life has always been a little bit of a glass ceiling syndrome. I like to have something new going on. Um, so it felt right to jump into a position to promote our really it started as me working as our private dining coordinator and and special events. And, you know, we, yeah. we put on probably I think last year we did 18 wine dinners. And really, you stepped into the role, taking over, doing our wine dinners. And it went from wine dinners to all of our special events, our off-site catering. Yes, we do off-site catering. And um, and then, then we as we... A, like a banner across the flash. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, there, there's, a way to, there's a way to do that. There's a way to do that. Just, yeah. I'm not that Listen, it's only yeah. episode six. Yeah. 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 So. Our audiovisual guy yeah. is on vacation. Yeah, so. yeah look yeah. here. Right. The whole number right here. By the way, I don't know how far we are into this before we go on any further. Um, Ghost Block is owned by the Pelissa family. Yes, yes. So code word... Code word. Oh, here we go. Code word. Write this down. If you want a complimentary glass of wine, the Sav Blanc or the Choco Block, both oh. poured by the glass. While supplies last. While supplies last. <laughs> in any of our stores, that would be all on, three locations. All three locations on 425. That will be Thursday. Tomorrow. It's, it's tomorrow. Well, it's, today is well, Wednesday, it, so tomorrow is Thursday. We've been okay. through this before. Okay, okay. So, <laughs> yes. All right. All right. I'm just learning yes. still, you know. Okay, yeah. I mean, today is the it's first episode, day of my... It's episode 425, six. you mentioned Pelissa family. Yes. Anyway, bringing it back, finish it up with moving so from... mentioned Pelissa family. Yes. No, from the special events, then I don't want to tell your story to, to, to the um, But yeah, special events, and then suddenly we were a three location brand and we you a know, chain yeah you know we were a chain chain. chain we're not listen yeah, yeah. that's in yes, the restaurant industry you got three you got three, three stores links. you're a chain three okay links. but yeah um just the need has grown exponentially right. over yeah. the past i'd say two years and um couldn't be excited more excited for what's next for us but um yeah the, okay so having said that director of special events and marketing 
and you've been with us for five going on six years. We'll just say the marketing has definitely come more recently. Right. That was and so I guess a question that I have is we hired a restaurant coach, Donald Burns, to help us. Yeah. DB. And um, so how has that helped you and how has that helped you in marketing? Well, I'm the star pupil at Sonapa University. I'd like to just point that out, you know, okay. always here to learn. And having a coach suddenly gave us, I'd just say, some direction in that we all have limiting beliefs. We mm -hmm. have things that we just don't think we're capable of or that we don't need. And to hear him kind of blow all of that up and say, yeah, no. Do you think Coke needs marketing? Do you think Pepsi needs marketing? Well, who has the ads at the Super Bowl? The people you already have it in their hand, in right. your hand, but they're marketing to us. Top, so, or top of mind. I think he always says. Best with, known beats best. Yes. Yeah, so yes. McDonald's may not have the best exactly. burger, but they're still marketing and we're best known beats best. So you so. don't go, hey, we're busy. We don't really need to market right now. You just Luckily, we're both. Market. Best known and best. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We're, Luckily. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. All right. So, with a little bit of hard work. Anyway. With a lot of hard work. Um, yeah. So the next thing. So we. Yeah, talk about a little bit of that coach. Okay, so then now the next thing is special events. Yeah. Mother's Day is all about create is a is about appreciation. Here's the moms. And and, and creating lasting memories. And so part of our mission statement and our core values, and I, I I've gone into this every podcast, is that. We want to delight our guests and create lasting memories by transporting them to the heart of wine country. And we do that by showcasing wines from Sonoma County and Napa Valley. And Mother's Day, we're going to show appreciation and we want to create lasting memories. Mm -hmm. So how are we doing that? Well, we're serving Chilean sea bass. That's for sure. Love. Because what mom doesn't love? No, that. first of all, and we're opening on Sunday. We're not we're typically open on Sundays we're anymore. Opening on we're Sunday. opening on Sunday. We're opening on Sunday. We've got a nice uh, special, you know, chef inspired specials board that is going. What do we have? Chilean sea bass, mm -hmm. petite and fillets. I'm sure we'll have a special cocktail for mom. But hey, I'm a mom. I've got two kids, and I can tell you that. If they wanted to take me to dinner, that'd be great. You know, it, at Sonapa. At, at Sonapa. At Sonapa. Yes, exactly. So, um, you know, a warm, inviting atmosphere, and just mm -hmm. you know, the you can kick back, enjoy dinner. We'll do the dishes for you. So, are we opening yeah. earlier on no, Mother's no, Day? No, 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 normal, no normal business, business normal hours. Business you know, hours. Four thirty in New Smyrna, four in Jacks, and four in Palm Beach. Yes, yes, yeah. yes yeah. absolutely. Listen, I, and I will. I mean, I will go on record to guarantee. You're going to have the best service and the best food. You come to yeah. Sonapa for Mother's Day and you will not be disappointed. Yeah. Bring bring, mom, bring your bring mom. mom to us. Bring, bring your mom to us. And if up. you don't have a mom, bring somebody else's mom. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the thing is we bring all a mom. Have, we all yeah. have mom like figures. You know, there's, I, I have an excellent mother. She's one of the most amazing people in this world. But, um, there's always someone in your life yeah. that's yes. just yes. influential and someone that you want to thank for somebody who could consider a mom. Yeah, yes, somebody who so. helped you, uh, who loved you, and took care of you. Yeah. So uh, yes, uh, Wait, just because okay. you're not a mom doesn't mean you're real quick. All right, talking about mom. No, 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 no. I know we are. My Wait, adult what, what ADD is kicking up? in. No, I'm. I'm I am. I'm standing up. <laughs> are we all still? No. Oh, oh we, we I, I, I can only do so much white. Okay. Oh, okay. yeah, that's okay. All. Okay. Um, seriously. All right, so oh, you know what? I, talking about I got this one. Oh, oh. <laughs> Let me you. just pull bottle. Here we go. Oh. All right. One of my earliest memories. Joe, you want to talk a little bit about? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, we're we're still we're still we're still storytelling. Yeah, we're storytelling. One of the earliest memories of my mom pushing. I'm probably four years old. Pushing a dining room chair across the kitchen to be at the stove with her, scalding tomatoes. I mean, bushels of tomatoes. That my mom, my grandmother, all of them. It was just. The best cooks. Yeah. I mean, such an incredible experience growing up with that all around me. All right, this yeah. is your red one. It's good stuff. I gotta get you some. I gotta <laughs> get you some more. Just like a mom, you always got you got shafted there. Yeah. Okay. So we're drinking now. This is the uh, Elizabeth Rose, Chaka Block. I believe it's 2021. Okay. Uh, fantastic juice. Uh, drank it a little bit earlier today. Not much, but a little bit. Uh, big dark fruits. 
a uh, little chocolate, a little spice, very balanced acidity. Uh, you know, come in and get it with the filet. Come in and get it with the meatloaf. Come in and get it with the Korean ribs. Oh, yeah. um, but uh, just a, a, a great or big drink cab. It by on its own. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So a, a fantastic sipper, day mm -hmm. sipper, night sipper. Right. Yeah, either way. But uh, Elizabeth Rose Choco Block. Um, it's a Cab Merlot blend. It's got a touch of Malbec in it. Mm -hmm. And it is 100% uh, Yontville. And uh, from the Blockhouse Vineyard, again, a state owned. And uh, and I think those hints of chocolate and the Blockhouse Vineyard. I'm guessing this. Are you making this up? Sure. I'm you can make up this. anything you want. I yeah. do all the time. No, I'm telling you, this is for real. Yeah, okay. Yeah, this Chocolate is for real. Lock. Wait, you went to high school with There's Chrissy Crawford too? Yeah. yeah, I went to different high schools wow. across the country. Yeah. Yes, yes. And yes. she said, hints of chocolate, it's the Block Vineyard. I know that's a fact. It's block house. I'm gonna vineyard. call it fucking chocolate block. Okay. There you go, and there it is. Like so chocolate block, it is really a fantastic. No, it's awesome. So it's about seventy percent cab, and then a little merlot, and a little bit of malbec. And also all organic. A fantastic. Wow. All organic. All of their vineyards are one hundred percent organic. Okay. Uh, so and again, they've got six hundred and thirty acres. Uh, six hundred thirty-five under, planted under vine. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yes. So. Wow. Yeah. Uh, to the chocolate block. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Love it. Right. Love your interpretation of that, Joe. That was yeah, well, you know. All right, so um, we've touched on the Choco Block. We've touched on the mm -hmm. Ghost Block Sav Blanc. Uh, both mm -hmm. fantastic. Um, Emily, we kind of talked about your career as you came into Sonapa and where you are as the director of special events and marketing. And we have focused our – we've been focused on marketing. Laser. Uh, Hyper-focused. Hyper -focused. Laser focused. And it's – I guess what we've been doing is considered organic marketing. Yes. So it's all the social media that we've been doing, very organic. And I think that we're we're very good at that. Um, What's next up? Well, I think I have I have a question. Yeah. Uh, um, about uh, Emily and her and her marketing okay. marketing team. So Emily, the last time you and I talked shop, I'm just going to be honest with you. Uh, you took me down some damn rabbit hole about, uh, you know, flexing your intellect on postmodern industrialism from utopia to ideology. And I'm going to be serious right here. You um, you, you kind of made me feel a little inferior. So I'd like to talk to you today about something that that's on you, Chris. I think easy, Joe. Easy. easy. We're in that's a loving, a sharing environment topic. here. So I, I want to uh, ask you a question, uh, something that I can get my arms around that is cutting edge. And um, so we've seen AI uh, in marketing. Mm -hmm. um, and from your experience, what is the most transformative ways AI is being used in restaurant marketing okay. today? Well, OK, so and yes. And what are your predictions for the near future? For AI. Okay. So in this, is, this is our debate. So our grapes, ghost yeah. block. Yes, we, we're switching gears. Elizabeth Rose. Now we're into our debate. So and it's gloves, the guys. debate of AI as it applies to restaurants and specifically in this case, marketing. So so Emily, you've this. got your you've got your so, question. Let's start by saying AI has had the year of its life. Right. It has been the wild, wild west for AI. In Agreed. 2023. Agreed. All right. 2024, you're seeing a lot more regulation and you're seeing a lot more structure with what companies are allowed to do. And I think we're going to continue to see that evolve a lot in 2024. You know, it's borderline invasive, some of what AI can do. You know, you talk about something and it shows up on your phone. Yes. Okay. Let's yeah. That, that's creepy. All right. No. But talk to Alexa. Also, you're going to get something on also, your Instagram the next day. There's some convenience involved in that. Sure. So you can't hate it 100%. You know, I think part of, I have a very old soul. So part of me is just like, wow, this is crazy. But in some ways, <laughs> the stars are aligning. Listen, somebody's listening to somewhere me. Somewhere. And they are. Somewhere out there is a restaurateur way back that was handwriting yep. letters to invite people to his yep. interview. But to his events, and yeah. we've been able to have email now. Or even and the so, direct mail piece. I mean, that, exactly. that's old. Well, Joe, exactly. I, mean, and, I mean, I was doing direct mail well, 20, here's 20 the thing. years ago. It's all evolving way faster than any of us can keep up yeah. with. The shit that I posted last week, that's like 1949. Now. Right. Yeah. You know, right. nobody. So, but when it comes to AI, 
AI. So let's just, one, what are we doing with AI right now with phone answering? So we're even looking at that and we're exploring it at one of the locations. But yeah, AI can uh, answer the phones uh, in seconds instead of maybe ringing, maybe the hostess doesn't get there, which we're really good at, but maybe uh, the common questions, a link sent to their phone. Uh, what time are you open? Oh, here's our hours of operation, all by AI. Uh, what are your happy hour specials? Yeah. Oh, great. Here's a link to your phone. Before you can get the question out, the links on your phone to our menu, to our hours of operation, it's just incredible. And it's it's cut down the number of phone calls that our guest facing uh, team is taking where they could be talking to an in-person guest right. while the phone's ringing and the phone's ringing for, or helping a, can I, can helping I get a reservation? A, helping a guest in-house sure. already. Okay. Can I get but a reservation? Future, right. Now there's a link. I yeah. mean, I got my prescription so drugs on AI of yesterday. AI is that it is a little blue pill. <laughs> no. Um, Not yet, Chris. Uh, I just, just Chris, uh, I thought but, we were, listen, but currently, it's a family show, folks. But what we're doing um, to answer part of the question that you asked, so we're using Chat GPT to help write ad copy, to write marketing content where you don't have to have a marketing company. You don't have to somebody. You don't have to say, hey, this is our concept. This is what we want. You type that shit into chat GPT and it, boom, it blasts it out. This podcast, we will upload The more it. you put in, the more the better right. it is. We upload this podcast. to It's a, a, a program called Opus Clips. AI is going to dissect it, pull out the best clips, and it's going to, it'll give us, let's say we're going to talk for 20 minutes, 25 minutes. It'll give us. 20 clips that we can post 30 30 second spots they'll add the, the and they'll be the, the, the best 30 seconds listen, the best listen, listen, not everybody's restaurant company has the ago, ability to do what we're doing exactly. right now but a year but, ago i was taking 20 minutes to piece out clips correct add subtitles edit subtitles and the fact that now we're sitting here with this kind of technology it's amazing so now you're and a prompt future, engineer no but the future <laughs> basically of it right is that they are predicting that as a business, you will have a bot dedicated to your business that basically memorizes. And not a C bot. You, no, it's not well, a C bot. We're <laughs> lucky in that. Every but, Everybody deserves a C bot. Yeah. So, <laughs> but, everybody. You know, it will memorize your marketing patterns. It'll memorize who responds to what. It will tell you what you need to change. It'll tell you colors you need to change in your ads and font you need That's to change. That's amazing. It, it's, yeah. it's it's wild yes. is what it is. Yes, it is. But it, that, I would say that that's the future of it. And, you know, we're sitting here right now adapting to technology that we didn't have a year ago. Right. And I hope that we can continue to adapt to the future without losing personal touch to our Sure. Business. So so I've got a question for you because AI has is, is become integral into what we're doing. Uh, we, uh, as everybody knows, hired a restaurant coach. And I want to ask you this. How important is it that we hired a coach that not only knows traditional organic grassroots marketing, but is also very savvy in the AI marketing realm. It's crucial. It's, it's blown the ceiling out of our glass, glass window. Here. Do you think I mean, it's, it's important? Absolutely. Window, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's I get it. There's They're, glass both. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's um, but it's taken us to the next level in a way that we, we wouldn't have on our own. Yeah. No, in yeah. fact, I mean, I think oh. AI has transformed how Donald Burns looks. <laughs> have you noticed that? He, he gives you shit. You can give him shit right now. <laughs> God. <laughs> Donald, we, uh, you look great. Yeah. You look fantastic. The jets that are behind you. You look fantastic. Look good. So, we're but uh, that we're, we're kidding, of course, uh, but all kidding aside, but for, for an independent restaurateur, like, we are. Yeah. I mean, this is do you think it's important for them to maybe I think it's consider crucial. it? Yeah, I do. I do. It. I think it's crucial. I think it it takes all of your traditional methods yeah. and it upgrades them. You know, you're not just uploading pictures of your menu, which nobody can really read because you're zooming, you know, on Instagram and it doesn't work. 
but yeah, you need the you need the encouragement to do the videos. You need a marketing calendar. You need someone that is going to go in and ask yourself. But we didn't know shit about no, this. No, we didn't know shit. No, a year ago, it. really, all of us. Yeah. No, no. How much did we listen, fucking know about marketing? Nothing. It still no, work. It, it was grassroots. Work. It was very limited. Go out and touch your guests. Drop off some platters. Yeah. It, it, I mean, it was be involved in the community. Involved it was archaic. It was yeah, very no. archaic. Well, it, yes. You have two and options as a restaurant. You can post pictures of your food. Or you can become a marketing company that runs a restaurant. Right. And let's face it, everybody wants to just be entertained. Yeah. So. No, I love the picture of your chips and queso. Exactly. That's fantastic. But, but tell me on. a story. Exactly. Right. Tell me a story, and that's what engage me. That's what right. we've learned. Engage me. That's and what we've learned. Well, like so we I, used to post pictures of an empty restaurant. Guess what? We don't do that anymore. Yeah. Because our restaurants aren't because, empty. Exactly. Why would you post pictures of an empty restaurant? It's not empty. Right. You know? So we've learned right. a lot, and I think it's uh, yeah, I think it's been crucial to to what we're doing, and and important okay. to other guys. So now I'll we'll say this, and this is kind of cheers. This cheers. is yeah, cheers, nice, cheers. nicely done. Cheers. Taste toast cheers. together, as I say. Always. Uh, the final question that I want to pose is: There's a lot of buzz about AI. Obviously, we're talking about it on only the six podcasts, but it is everywhere. It's you know, you, every article you read. Uh, when it when it comes to investing, it's about AI and Nvidia and what Google is doing, what Apple is doing, and there is a lot of skepticism. There's a lot of skepticism, particularly in a personalized industry such as us. Mm -hmm. So, what do you think the concerns are, specifically when it comes to AI and restaurant marketing, and how do you think we address those? Because there's some things that we we're encountering that so seem invasive for us. You know, we really built a personal connection to all of our network and all of our guests during COVID. Right. People were receiving you know, people that were shut off from society mm -hmm. and socializing were receiving personalized emails from Adam Berenger, former mayor of New Smyrna Beach, owner of Sonapa Grill with this like inside scoop yeah. of what was going on out there. And people love that. And it built this network of people that I think expect that from us. So we were very respectful of that. We don't want of to the trust that we've built, of the trust that we've built. And we don't want to hand that over. Right. Um, that being said. I can tell you that the amount of emails that I receive and answer on the regular basis from our website, when we're a, you know, seven, eight location brand, I don't know that that's something that we can keep up with. There may be a place for some automatic response. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and it would impact the guest experience positively. So at the end of the day, it's a very good thing. Okay. Yeah. So I think as we, as we are right now, I think we can all agree that, you know, it is very personalized. The emails that we send are personalized. If we send out a text message, it's definitely personalized. Yeah. Uh, and you know what? I don't think we can ever let go of that regardless. I mean, when, when we start doing emails and communicating with our guests, but there are going to be roles for AI in the future. And I think we have to embrace technology because no matter what, it's, moving it's coming. It's yeah. happening. It's, I mean, it's yeah. on the way. Do you still have a phone book? Do you, no. Do you read the paper? Right next to my Rolodex. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and and it's rolling. You can't get rid of it. And my, it's very hey, textile. You know, I love it. Oh, if you're going there. It's very textile. Eight track. My very first eight okay. track oh, was right. ACDC. I don't want to hear about your ABBA stories either. Oh, Come yeah. on. Yeah, no. track. Commodores. No. All right. <laughs> Little Lionel Richie. All right. Jim so, Croce on eight track. Ooh, Family listen. Vacation. Gatlinburg. Yeah. You know, Sounds like the back of a station yeah. wagon Let's to me. There's All right, always listen. change. There's always going to be change. change is my point. I think uh, to wrap it up, no doubt, Ghost Block is uh, it's it's just a yeah, fantastic. Fa yeah. fantastic, but it's what an amazing family. Yeah. Yes. And their philosophy to winemaking, their philosophy to the land that they own. Yes. Passing it down generation to generation. I hope they continue to do yes. that. Yes. Yes. Um, which I believe that they will just because the values that are instilled in them, just from what we saw. Well, fifth generation, yeah. they've gotten past the hump. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, no, and, yeah. And, no, they, in many no, ways. And by yes. the way, a lot of wine wineries don't make it yeah, through the third no. generation. And I will right. tell you this we're out there and there is now a sixth generation. Mm. Wow. So the, the, they're young. 
they're children, but they're, yeah, yes. Yeah. So amazing wine, amazing winery. And then Emily, your story with us, your progression um, in your career. And I just see that growing. And the fact that we debated AI, um, it there's obviously there's a lot of good things that are coming out of it. It's helping us with marketing. It's helping us with answering phones yep. and maybe reducing a little bit of labor. But at the end uh, of the day, it's all for the guest experience. Yeah, one hundred percent. And that, 100%, is, and that is one goal. If we it can, gets in the way of that ever, we'll ever for, at least it. for us, we'll no. have right? It. And we'll yeah. have to. That, yeah, it's so not. It's not for. It's not for us. Yeah. And if oh, anyone so. has watched this till the very end, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Cheers. You. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Taste toast together. Yeah. Always. Love you guys. I won't be here next week. Mm. New York City. <laughs> what are you talking about? You won't be here next week. <laughs> I'm going to New York That's City. Not a pretty Yeah, you're you're going. Oh shit, I'm back on Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're back. <laughs> I am back on Wednesday. You're back Monday night. Uh, unofficially. Do you know where I'm, you're going? I'm going to the Globe. In New York City.